Night Tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, first of all, I want to thank two donors to the channel. These are Cornel Lols and Luis Antonio Valadares. Thank you very, very much for your donations to the channel. They're greatly appreciated. And as always, I'm shouting you out because you help me keep this channel alive. Thank you very much. Today's video is going to be about this specific request that I got on my video on how to install Pi-hole version 6. This request came from Adobe CRT and he said, can you show us how to install on the Docker on Synology, not Container Manager? So he's talking about the old user interface before 7.2, I believe, or 7.1 where the Docker was just named Docker and we did not have Container Manager and we did not have all the extra features that came with Container Manager. So in this video, we're gonna cover how to install PyHole version six using the UI as an example so that if you still wanna remain in the old version of the Synology user interface, you understand how you do the process to basically convert the contents of a docker compose file into the actual user interface to actually get this stuff deployed i highly recommend that you upgrade to the latest version of synology it's gonna make things way easier for you but if for some reason you can't then this is gonna be the guide that is gonna let you know how to look at next videos and then convert them to the ui if you want to and honestly, the main reason why I recommend you to do that is there's a lot of features now that we get with Container Manager. Makes it a lot easier for you to manage your applications because you can just put all of those Docker Compose files in a GitHub repository and you manage it like if it's code. So if your NAS for some reason goes down, bringing everything back up is super easy because you just get that Docker Compose file and then just boom run it and everything comes back like you had it right the only thing that you might lose is the the configuration files that you might have lost or something like that but the the setting up it's a lot easier so yeah let's get to that now now i don't have a nas running the old version of the synology system so i'm gonna try to replicate that using the nas that is running the latest version which is 722 but it's very similar it's just a few things that are different so I'm gonna have on the right side the Docker Compose file that I created for the previous video. And in here, I'm gonna do the manual uh, setup using the UI. So as usual, you would click on the Docker icon. In, in your case, it's gonna say Docker instead of Container Manager. So you go there and then you should have options here to go with the container. Now in this case, uh, you're gonna go with the usual way. So you're gonna create a container, but in order to do that, you need to first have downloaded the image. So in that case, we're gonna go and look for the PyHole image. I already downloaded it, so that's why I have it here, but I can just update it. So it looks like I'm downloading it. So I'm now updating that image. It's kind of similar to if I was downloading it for the first time. And once we have that image fully downloaded, then we're gonna go ahead and try to deploy a container from that image. All right, now that it has finally finished downloading, I can just select that image and then I can say run, and then it's gonna bring up the usual interface for us. So in, in our case, we shouldn't have this to pick an image. It, it already should know which image we're gonna be using, so ignore this part here, but then we have to name this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this by hole, and that's the name of the container. Then we can enable resource limitations here if we want. So, you know, how much CPU you want to give it, how much RAM. So let's say I want to give it like two gigs of RAM or something like that. That would be 2048. And then enable auto restart. And that's usually enough for us. So then we can click on next. And then we have to look at the port settings. So now we have done the container name and we have done the image. So this is already fine. Now we need to work on the ports. So the ports are defined in here. So I said that we need to have 53 because that's a DNS service. So we need to have that because that's the main purpose of PyHole. So what we're gonna do here 
is what we're gonna put here port 53 it already knows about it so we're gonna expose it on port 53 in the NAS and it's gonna use TCP and UDP which is the two of them so that's fine we're getting we're covering this we're gonna listen on 443 so I'm gonna expose 443 on 443 assuming that that's available on your NAS if not then you have to use another port for example 8443 and that's gonna be on TCP now the other ports that are being described here we can basically remove them unless you're going to uh, use http instead of https in that case you would put 80 so i'm going to get rid of 80 i'm going to leave it at 443 that's uh, SS, uh https and then port 67 which is the one for dhcp i'm not going to use that so i'm going to get rid of that too and then port 123 it wasn't even defined in the things that i found for this so i'm going to get rid of that so basically we end up with two ports 443 which is the user interface and 53 which is the dns service and that's all for the ports that we're covering here so that's done now the next thing we need to do is we need to mount the volumes so in that case if we already have a file a folder we just click on add folder then we look for that folder remember that I have a folder here in the configs which is that has all the container stuff that is named pyhole and in here then we have pyhole so I'm going to select that and then I'm going to add another folder that is going to be docker in that pyhole folder and it's going to be dns mask t because those are the two volumes that we have defined in here so that means that I need two mappings here and now for the pyhole folder then I'm going to point it in the container into the Etsy pyhole folder. And then the other one is going to be Etsy DNS mask D. So this is in the NAS, this is in the container, how we're going to map it so that the container stores all the stuff in the NAS, basically. So now we have covered the volumes, we have covered the ports, we have covered the top part here. So we have only a few things to do here, which is the capabilities and the environment variables. So now the next part here that we see is, let me reduce this, is the environment variables. So in here, what we're gonna be doing is we need to add the time zone, the user ID, the group ID, and two more. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And I don't see any of them here. So I'm gonna add two, three, four, five times. And in here, then I'm going to copy those names of those variables that I need to put. So time zone, PUID, PGID. Then we need this one that is about setting the password for the user interface of the pie hole. And this other one that says on which mode to listen. And then we put the values that I have specified here too. So for the listening, we're going to listen on all. Then for the password, I'm going to put password. That's fine for the sake of the video. And then for the user and group, you have to log into your NAS with SSH and run the ID command to find that out if you don't know. If you've only created one administrator user and you've done it the traditional way and you're still using that one, then it's going to be 1026 and 100. And then for the time zone, in my case, it's going to be America, New York. So that's all the environment variables that we need that we have defined here. So now we can reduce that and then we go into the capabilities. So for this, it asks for quite a few amount of capabilities. So you need to go configure capabilities and then look for those. So for example, cap chone. So in here it's defined as chone. So we're gonna let, leave that checked. We're gonna say net admin. So we don't have anything that says cap net admin, we have net admin so we select that we also need net bind service which is, which is already checked we need net raw so it's already checked we need sys nice which i just checked and sys time so i've checked that and then basically i don't see the the net admin other one so i'm assuming that that's going to be given to it by the one that i selected here for net admin so those are the capabilities that we need so okay now we have specified here the capabilities that we need it's just going to show us the ones that we added the ones that were already there are not shown in here so that's fine so now you can um remove this the network shouldn't appear in your version because it's old 
and the execution, execution command also and links we're not going to do anything so basically we set up the ports we set up the volumes we set up the environment variables and we set up the capabilities and that should be fine it, sh it should not be all in one window in your case it should be like you configure one then click next and then you configure the other one and stuff like that but basically that's what you have to put on those is what i'm trying to say so i'm going to say next and then validate that the information is correct and then we can run this container after the wizard is finished so i'm going to leave that checked and i'm going to say done and then in this case this is the important thing that i wanted to uh, showcase right if you have any service in your nas that is running on any of these ports you're gonna see something like this it's telling you hey you already have something using port 443 and port 53 so i can't use those ports right in my case it's because i've already configured pihole so those are already assigned to pihole so in this case i'm gonna go back into that section so you can always go back here and then go into the section and let's say i'm going to use 8443 for this and then i'm going to use and let me just remove it because i'm not going to be using this so in your case you shouldn't have any problem with 53 unless you have another container that is working basically as a dns server the main problem would be with this one right so now we can continue and then try to do it again and it says that I still have something here that is using that port. So let's change that again. Let's uh, use, um, what, 4443. Four, let's see if that works. There we go. Now it's not complaining because I don't have any service that is using, using that port. So now it should trigger the build of that container. And then that container should initiate and we should be able to track it in the section where we see our containers listed in Docker. So now let's go into the containers. We should see PyHole starting here. And we go here, we go into the logs, and then we should just follow those logs. So we refresh and make sure that everything goes all right. So we see that it is using um, the information that we provided. And here is starting the PyHole service. And it says that it's listening already. So that's looking good. And it's listening on 443. And 80, so that's good. So ideally now that it says that it's listening and I don't see any more updates happening here, then we should be able to go into the IP of this NAS and then go into the port that I specified, which is uh, 4443, and we should get that user interface. So let's do that. Should be 4443. And I forgot to put the HTTPS, that's why I got that weird error. So if you get this, like, isn't working, it's probably because I selected that I was going to use HTTPS. So once I put HTTPS, then it should get better and give me this message. Obviously, I'm using a self-signed certificate, so it's not going to be safe for the browser. So the browser is going to give me that warning. It's a Pi-hole self-signed certificate. But I can just ignore that by clicking advance and then proceed. And then it says that I don't have permission to access this because I'm pointing to the slash. So IP of the NAS colon 4443, but nothing else. So I have to put slash admin in there. And then I'm going to get to this user interface that I needed. And now to log in here, I'm going to be using the password that I specified when I define this container, which is if I go here into the general settings, I'll see that the password was password. So let's go here and let's put password and voila, we're inside the Pi hole and the Pi hole is running perfectly fine. It's just, you know, we deployed it using the old fashion. So once again, I highly recommend you that you upgrade to the latest version of dsm because container manager definitely is great a lot better to manage your containers than the traditional docker way so all of these things that we did manually it was just a matter of dropping this file there and then triggering a build and that was it so you can still get it going like you just saw but it, it's just more involved. You have to do a lot of other things. So that's why I recommend you to do that. So hopefully this video is going to help you as a guide on how to convert future videos of mine that I'm going to be doing using the Docker Compose into the traditional way of deploying something using the user interface. So it's pretty straightforward. Things are by block. 
So once you get my Docker Compose file, you basically, you know, use that to validate and put the information that you need in the in the user interface, like the container, the capabilities, the ports that you need, the environment variables, and the volume mappings, which is the folders in the NAS and stuff like that. And then the resources, you also do that by yourself when where you saw I put the resource limitations. So basically, it is very straightforward. Uh, with the Docker Compose, you can still create the containers using the UI. So that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. I've noticed that a lot of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. It's like, I would say, maybe like a 10, 15% of the people that watch the videos currently are subscribed. So if you subscribe to the videos, if you like the content, that's going to help us grow. And it's going to make things uh, nicer for the channel to get, you know, access to other things, uh, sponsors that maybe get us you know, tools to try or hardware to review and stuff like that. So definitely that'll help us out. Also, you should have not received an ad on my video. And that's because I'm not monetizing the channel. That's on purpose. But that also means that whenever I upload a video and I get views and people like it, I do not make a single cent from it. So if you like my content, you want to support me to continue creating this kind of content for you. I have put a link in the description below for PayPal. You can send me a donation there. I'll highly appreciate it. There's also a Bitcoin wallet if you want to donate using it that way. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.